Hello. Hello. I found him. I'm alive. <laughs> uh, he's had a rough time being in charge of his office. Yeah. Uh, meant to post over the weekend, but we were caught up too busy watching movies. We got caught up in that. There we go. Words. A whole lot of uh, Joe Bob Briggs Monster Vision. On yes. Shutter. So I have a, a Verve subscription. I do the premium, so I get all the extra channels. And one of the channels is Shudder, as in, you know, shuddering in fear. And it's a whole bunch of horror movies, and they had Joe Bob Briggs' last drive-in 24-hour marathon. We did not do all 24 hours. We uh, picked four movies that I at least heard of. I would seen two of them before. Yes, so the first movie we watched was a uh, Tourist Trap from... 83? I think it was from 79. Whatever. <laughs> it's old. <laughs> yes. It was an old, weird horror movie. Yes. That begins really cheesy. Very and cheesy. Continues being cheesy, but kind of creepy at the same time. Yep. Uh, the second movie we watched was Sleepaway Camp, which was very weird. Mostly funny. Yeah, it wasn't scary in the slightest. It wasn't. But it was very weird, and there's a beehive to the face, so... Yeah, if only you could escape from a bathroom stall from all those bees. Yeah, it Just, was... like, crawl under it or over it or something. I know, it's like, oh no, the door's locked, there couldn't possibly be a way out of this. Or, or the window that the bees were dropped in from. Anywho, uh, third movie we watched was was it reanimator yes it was we watched reanimator i haven't i hadn't seen any of these movies by the way so uh that was interesting it was very weird seeing jeffrey combs without makeup i don't think i've ever actually seen his face <laughs> still playing a creepy character though i know th i mean i i it's just what jeffrey combs does i know but i'm so used to seeing him as wayun with the thing or uh, as the Ferengi, I can't remember his name, with the fire. Liquidator Brunt. There you go. <laughs> or a Commander Shran. Yep. I don't know why. I told Mom his, his rank was Captain. Eh, Commander. Yeah. She'll watch this. <laughs> Anywho, I'm so used to him seeing, you know, being covered in paints and prosthetics that seeing his actual face, a young face, I might add, was very weird. So he was a human in one episode of Geek Space Nine. Was he? Yeah, when uh, Cisco was going through his uh, mind trip where he was a writer in oh. the 1920s or 30s. He was a cop, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Anywho, uh, the fourth movie we watched was Hellraiser. Not anywhere near as scary as, uh, you know, child me thought it would be, so... It's mostly just a uh, glooker. I was say, it's not even that gross. It's just unnerving, the amount of slime that they use. Like, I thought Alien was bad with how much, like, KY jelly they were covered in, but, oh, so goopy. Yeah. Uh, the fifth movie we watched was not part of the Joe Bob... Could you two stop it? Twins are fighting. Go about them. Anywho, uh, we, we, we ended our Joe Bob Briggs marathon there and moved on to other movies. So I believe the fifth movie we watched was Evil Dead, the original, not the uh, newer remake one. Yep, we watched the commentary track on that, and Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness. Yep, so we watched six movies over the weekend. I think she's seen uh, Evil Dead 1 Seven? and 2 three or four times, and I've seen them probably two or three times as many as that. And then Army of Darkness, I could probably quote you, so <laughs> we watched it a lot. Army of Darkness is probably one of my uh, three most watched movies. I've probably seen that over 50 times. Even my mom knows Army of Darkness, <laughs> so... It's not scary. It is creepy at points. But it's mostly just fun and awesome. It's like a fantasy movie with stupid Bruce Campbell. And once you start figuring out that Ted Raimi is everywhere, it's like, spot the Ted Raimi! And it was nice to them pointing out, like, oh, he's the skeleton that, you know, is, like, running around going, ah! 
Yep. <laughs> and uh, before all that, we actually watched uh, Sadako and Kayako. Oh, yeah. Sadako versus Kayako. And Sadako is the girl from uh, Ringu, or The Ring. And Kayako is the woman from The Grudge. Or Juwan. Yes, or Juwan. <laughs> I always forget that one. <laughs> Uh, it's a Japanese movie, it was all subtitled, but it was worth it, and it was mostly comedy, with a crap ton of creep, and then, a, like, one or two jump scares. But, uh, it's these two college girls, they find the ring tape, the cursed video, uh, they watch it, one wasn't paying attention, the other did watch it, so she's cursed, and her friend's trying to help her break the curse. And they decide the best way to do that is to get another curse to attack it. So they bring the tape into the grudge house and turn it on. And then Kayako and Sadako fight it out. And I won't ruin the ending. You can go watch it yourself. <laughs> it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Stupid. And it's the, what was it, the 12th? Uh, Grudge movie and the Twelfth Ring movie, if you count uh, the American remakes too. So I thought that was pretty cool. And it was like the seventh girl to play Kayako and the fifth girl to play Sadako or something like that. It was it was weird. There's was, those facts. <laughs> yes, a lot of facts. Just like I read that it was never meant to be a movie. They just kind of made a teaser thing as a pr er, April Fool's Day prank, and then all the fans were like, "Do it! We want to see that." And in Japan, they even had a baseball game of Kayako versus Sadako. It's Japan. Yeah. Other than that, we've just been watching uh, Rebels since we uh, finished Star Wars Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. So we're almost through season two of that. Yup. And, and we uh, just bought season three and four. So we'll finally, I haven't even seen those, so we'll finally catch up. Yep. Yay! Though you can try and spoil it if you want. I've already read it all, so... I got uh, Bro Force on Switch, and I've been playing through that a bunch. A whole bunch of little 8 bit representations of uh, Terminator and Robocop and Rambo and every other action hero from the 80s, 90s, and a little bit of the 2000s. You forgot, you're forgetting the woman representation. Uh, Ellen Ripley, the bride from Kill Bill, Tank Girl from Tank Girl. That girl from. Uh... With the gun leg. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cherry from Planet Terror. There you go. There's just probably a couple more I'm not thinking of. But, uh, yeah. A whole bunch of bros and uh, broads getting together to fight terrorism and everyone who's not America. So it's just hilarious. It's okay. Heavy metal music and explosions and fire. Oh, now I can have a second person uh, attest to how much candy we bought. 920-something pieces? A lot of candy. Plus a few of those uh, Milky Way Midnights. Oh, yeah, I did buy Milky Way Midnights after that. Uh, and we have more movies to, to watch, and we were thinking about watching Grimm on Shudder. They also have Channel Zero. And they watch uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Yes, <laughs> we have not watched that. There's a lot of things to watch. I just worry that we got uh, too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we'll take breaks. Uh, watched the newest season of Baking. Nah, not happy with that one. No. Mary was right. BBC makes it better. Yeah. Like, how can you have the British Bake Off without Mary Berry, without Mel, without Sue? Like, eh, no offense to Prue, but she's no Mary. And then Sarah and Noel are just so... Off kilter. Yeah, they have, like, no punchy personality. I don't know if it's just because it was their first season. Like, I guess I don't know what Mel and Sue were like in their first <laughs> season, but... The four seasons I've seen of them, you know, they interact with people, they're bouncy, and I don't know. Also, the bakers didn't have uh, much personality in and front of the cameras. And they failed at everything they did. 
They really just got like a whole bunch of artist type bakers though and kept asking them to do art projects instead of things that taste good. Yeah, and then of course they did the whole, oh, you did style over substance. Like, well, you told them to make a 3D, you know, cake. It's what do you now, expect? All the other seasons, it's like, bake a bread loaf that has like meat or cheese or something in it. Whereas this season it was like, bake a bread loaf and then make a amazing picture on top of it or some crap like that. Pretty much all of the cool things in the four seasons that are on Netflix, the other four, all the intric intricate, amazing things like Paul and his lion loaf. Exactly. Or but if you do it every single yeah. episode and event, it stops being special and just becomes routine of people who are getting broken trying to produce these things. So, it, it, it does make me sad to see what could possibly have been a good season. And maybe I am just jaded because I wanted to see my normal people. No, Deimos! No. Oh. But. At least I didn't pay for it. I just waited for it to be on Netflix. That's the story. Yep. So. Now we just have to decide what to watch next and how much candy to eat and at what pace to eat it. Ooh. Dieting is going to be super easy for you. With him? No. With two candy bowls in the house. And three open bags of candy. Yep. And tomorrow's taco night. Yay, tacos. I do like tacos. You got anything else? Nope, I think that's everything. Okay. That was a story of us watching horror movies because Halloween is coming soon enough for us, apparently. Yeah, it sounds silly when you say it out loud, though, doesn't it? It's like, whoa, Halloween time in September. It's, it's past Labor Day. It's technically fall, according to the military. <laughs> I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Or why my face is so red. You're just embarrassed and tired. <laughs> that must be it. Mm -hmm. So, we are going to go. Find something to watch, find something to eat, and figure out why the cats are being crazy. Wish us luck. Bye. Bye.